Hello everyone, today's data science interview question is from Amazon. We'll run you through a step-by-step -step solution using a framework that you can use for any coding question, whether on an interview or on the job. But before we do that, if you want to learn more about data science, hit the subscribe button. Our interview question for today is entitled sales growth per territory. This is a hard level problem. So if you want to interactively follow along with us, you'll find a link to the question in the description box below. The question asks us to determine the sales growth of each territory in Q4 2021. The formula for the sales growth is provided to us, which looks at the sales increase from Q3 to Q4 as a proportion of Q3 sales in percentage terms. Our output should show only the territories that have had sales in both quarters. In order to solve the problem, we use a three-step framework that helps us take a complicated problem and simplify it into just a few steps. You can apply this framework to solve any coding problem. The three-step framework consists of one, exploring the dataset, two, writing out the approach, and three, coding the solution. I'll guide you through the steps. Let's start answering the question. Let's start with step one, exploring the dataset. We're provided with two tables, FCT customer sales and map customer territory. From the schema, we can see that customer ID, prod SKU ID, and order ID columns are in object data type, and order ID is in date time format, and order value is an integer format. Let's click on the preview button to take a closer look at the table. We can observe from the column names that this is a list of orders in Amazon. From the table, the main information we will need are order value and order date columns. The other table we're provided is map customer territory table. It only consists of two columns, customer ID and territory ID, which are both in object format. Let's click on the preview button to see how the table looks. And here we are. This table shows the territory ID for each customer ID. We would need both of these columns as we require customer ID to link this to the FCT customer sales table. Let's talk about the territory ID column. It is clear that this refers to the territory of sale. If we hadn't seen the table schema, we would need to clarify whether this is the location of the sale, which is the customer related location or the seller's location. But since we've been provided with the table, we can assume that the territory ID here refers to the location of the customer. With that in mind, the analysis is going to reveal which areas have the strongest customer sales. This can be indicative of successful marketing efforts and or a strong consumer demand. One of the edge cases that your interviewer is probably anticipating is that some locations may not have had a sale at all for either Q3 or Q4 in 2021. This could happen because of, say, a new store opening or a temporary closures. If this wasn't explicitly stated beforehand, these are the type of scenarios you should probably be looking out for and discussing with the interviewer. For instance, what if there are locations with missing values? With new locations and temporary closures, there are a few ways this could be handled by the database as a zero, a blank, or no entry for the territory. And given how the FCT customer sales table looks like, it is most likely the latter. Let's keep the scenario in mind as we go through the problem. Let's move on to step two of the three-step framework, which is writing out the approach. With Python, we always start with importing the necessary libraries. This gives us access to the various packages and functions required to manipulate the data. Then we can start preparing our data for the analysis. Going back to the information required, we need the territories and their sales value for Q3 and Q4 of 2021. So the initial steps required are Step 2, filter for rows showing Q3 and Q4 sales in 2021. And step three, identify the territory of sale by merging the two tables. These two steps are interchangeable. To analyze sales on a quarterly basis instead of at a transactional level, we will aggregate the sales by summing this for each territory quarter combination. The expected table should show the territory ID, the quarter, which could be either three or four, and the respective sum of sales. To make these operations easier, we need to have a table in the form of territory, Q3 sales, and Q4 sales, which allows us to quickly calculate the ratio of Q3 and Q4 sales columns. To transform our data into the structure, we will merge the dataset onto itself. As we only want the territories with both Q3 and Q4 sales, an inner join here is appropriate. So our analysis excludes territories which have a sale only in Q3 or in Q4, for example, 
newly opened stores or stores with temporary closures. Then we calculate the sales growth ratio following the formula provided, which is Q4 sales minus Q3 sales divided by Q3 sales times 100. And finally, show the territory and the sales growth ratio by just selecting those columns from the sales table. This is a good point for you to ask the interviewer about your approach and gain any feedback and we'll move on to step three, which is coding the solution. Once you agreed on the approach, it's time to start coding. So first off, let's import the pandas and the datetime libraries. Start the data preparation by selecting only the sales for Q3 and Q4 across all territories. To do so, we will use the date time package to identify the year and quarter information from the order date column. Now let's run the code and see what our resultant table looks like. Here we have the FCT customer sales table as expected. Now this table does not have the territory information, so we will link this up with the map customer territory field using the common column customer ID. Now let's run the code. And here we have territory ID added to the table, which we're calling sales. Now, what we can do is we only need to show the territory of the customer, the order date and the order value. So let's just filter those columns out. Now let's run. And we only get the three columns that we require. All right, next step is to calculate the total sales by the territory ID and by quarter, which is using to summarize the sales. First, we will create groups based on the unique territory ID and quarter combinations using the group by method, and then aggregate this by summing up the fields. So let's first use a group by and sum it up. Okay, let's run the code and see how it goes. Here we go. Here we have all the order values. So by default, this only returns the field that you are aggregating, in this case, order value, because the columns sales territory ID and sales order date quarter specified in the group by clause are used as an index. Since we also want the territory and quarter as columns, we will have to reset the index. Now that we've reset the index, we can see all the three columns with the proper aggregate. Next, we will transform this table into the structure of territory, Q3 sales, and Q4 sales. So from our sales table, we will take a subset containing the Q3 sales and merge it into another subset containing the Q4 sales. Let's start with the Q3 sales subset. Let's find that out. Here we can see the result for the Q3 subset. Now let's merge it with the subset for Q4. This is what our solution looks like and let's run the code. There we go. We can find the subset containing the Q3 sales and the subset containing Q4 sales and their respective order values. When merging subsets, it's always helpful to use suffixes as it identifies which table the columns are from. By default, it uses underscore X and underscore Y, but we can customize this to show underscore Q3 and underscore Q4 instead. Now we're ready to calculate the sales growth ratio. We're going to use a formula provided and write the code. So we will create a new column called sales growth by using the formula provided. Let's run the code and get that column. This is the column with all the sales growth ratio for each territory. And lastly, we will need to show the territory and the sales growth ratio. So we're going to have to select the territory ID column as well. Let's do that by selecting from the sales table. And this is what our final solution looks like. Let's run the code and see how it goes. Here we are with the final table with the territory ID and the sales growth ratio for each of them. Let's validate to see if this is correct. All right, we've got the right solution. Now let's take a moment to consider the edge cases. It's good practice to actively think about the edge cases to help ensure the robustness of your solution. It also helps demonstrate strong attention to detail, as well as an understanding of the business, the industry, or the data capture process. One of the edge cases could be missing values. 
due to new store openings or closures, etc., which we had already identified. Another scenario to consider, especially in the case of e-commerce businesses like Amazon, are refunds. How would our solution take into account refunds? Here it is important to recognize that refunds may take place weeks or sometimes even months after the sale. We have to make certain reasonable assumptions regarding the recording of the refund. For example, is it logged in a separate dataset or is it in the same table as the sales but recognized as a negative number? Again, we should go back to our three-step framework for solving problems. Why not take a pause and come up with some ideas? Let us know in the comments down below how you'll approach this. Going back to the case of refunds, one thing you can do is analyze the net sales, that is sales after the refunds, instead of gross sales, which is essentially subtracting refunds from the sales. How do we do that? Considering how the data is being logged, one possibility is that the refund information is recorded in another table along with their order ID. So from this, we can merge the refunds with the sales dataset through the order ID column, allowing us to see both columns, the sales and the related refund to that sale. Anticipate uh, using a left join from the sales table to the refund table as realistically not all sales will have a refund. We will also probably have to impute missing refund values with a zero so that we can subtract refunds from sales without getting an error. This gets us to net sales and thereafter we can proceed with the other steps as discussed earlier. Alright, this ends our tutorial today where we covered several concepts like join, filter, aggregation, and daytime manipulation. If you enjoyed that or learned something new, be sure to check out our YouTube channel and interview practice platform to explore more data science related questions and interview topics.